Welcome to another edition of Course Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I felt myself uh, breaking out in a smile getting to be here at Horse Center with you. Ah, thank you, my friend. I feel the same way. And uh, hopefully there's a lot of viewers out there that are happy to be joining us today. We are going to do some Kentucky Derby points races, Matt, as we uh, get close to the end of the season. We got one Friday night in Oklahoma. And we got another one Saturday out in Southern California. Are you ready to roll, my friend? Let's go. Let's do the show. All right. We're going to start out first Fridays before Saturday. We're going to go Friday night. It's the Springboard Mile. Race number 10 in a 10-race card out in Oklahoma. I think they have six stakes races to end the night. But this is the big one. And the Springboard Mile, of course, has uh, Kentucky Derby points on the line going one mile. That's a two-turn one mile at Remington, as you know, Matt, and uh, drew a pretty competitive field of nine here. We're going to start from the rail out, and I think Brad Cox has two interesting horses in the field. Uh, Maybe the one we know a little bit less about is Fidget, Matt. He's a son of more than ready. I can't blame Cox for beginning this horse out on turf as a son of more than ready, but maybe he showed he likes the dirt in his last start. Yeah. And yeah, I think that that's something that Cox has done with, with uh, his horses. Some of them, some of them, which have turned out to be very good horses, start them on the turf, uh, start them on the turf, even, even in, uh, in Indiana, as was the case, uh, as was the case with, uh, with fidget fidget. Interesting also is a horse that he trains for Calumet famed Calumet Farms, um, moved from turf to dirt, and was a nice allowance winner. Yeah, nice allowance winner last time on Horseshoe, Indianapolis. Uh, Monomoy Girl, that whole time you were talking yeah. about Cox and Indiana and turf, I, I was thinking Monomoy Girl, that great female champion of recent years. Fidget, uh, like I said, has a lot to prove, uh, but he has won his last two, one on the grass, and in his dirt debut last time, as you said, nice allowance win. In Indiana, things will get tougher for Fidget here, as they will for number two, my buddy Mel. A son of Tonalist, Matt. Uh, he's already started five times. He's won twice. He's got uh, a win over the track in an allowance race, but uh, last time he could do no better than a pretty well-beaten second in the local Clever Trevor. Yeah, the local prep for this uh, springboard mile. I agree with what you said. And on top of it, those, uh, you know, those last couple races were pretty slow. Yeah, I'm glad you said it, Matt. I I, I don't like to insult these horses, so I'll let you do that for me. But uh, yeah, that Clever Trevor was not fast. Do you remember Clever Trevor as a racehorse, Matt? This is a horse I liked years ago. I don't really, Brian. Yeah, Clever Trevor was part of that wonderful Sunday Silence Easy Goer crop, Matt. So I had to uh, throw that in. And uh, looking over my shoulder, there they are, Sunday Silence and Easy Goer. Clever Trevor was a really nice horse and part of that crop. So there you go. Number three is the second from the barn of Brad Cox, Matt. Uh, I'm talking about Gettysburg Address. Of the two Cox horses, pretty similar on the morning line, eight to one, six to one. But maybe Gettysburg Address excites me a little bit more at this point in their careers. I think I would agree with that, Brian. Uh, 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 Gettysburg Address uh, has got some and has shown some early speed, which is always attractive uh, uh, in any race on the dirt in this country. It was a nice debut winner at Ellis Park and ran fourth in the grade three street sense which was a pretty good race had a pretty good field yeah yeah there's a couple things i like here matt and and a couple reasons to think maybe gettysburg address can move forward first off you see that flavian Pratt is down there in oklahoma with a ride i think that's a good sign uh as i mentioned six to one on the morning line i'm hoping those odds uh, are are pretty close because i think that's uh, pretty square on this course but yeah he moved straight from a, a maiden win at ellis park a debut win at ellis park to uh, the grade three street sets. And it was a sloppy track. He got uh, he got some distance in there. He, he was uh, on the early lead and he faded to fourth, but not a bad effort and an effort where I think he can improve off of. 
Number four is another horse from Oklahoma, Matt, Magic Grant, a son of good magic, uh, did absolutely nothing in his debut, but uh, came came from pretty far back to roll right by the field, win going away in the Clever Trevor last time. Yeah, it was a win by more than four <coughs> lengths. Um, he was not well regarded going into, into the uh, Clever Trevor, went off at 23 to one, and we already mentioned our overall evaluation of that field of horses yeah well hey it's no wonder that he was 23.9 to 1 in the clever trevor which he won easy after uh really doing nothing in his debut so it was kind of an interesting thing for them to go off a bad maiden race right into a stakes race and he won it nicely but as matt says it was slow one horse who is not slow is the number five glenn gary one of two straight sons of maximus mischief that we're going to talk about matt all of his races are at six furlongs, but this horse is fast. He began his career in Iowa, like some good two-year-olds do up there at Prairie Meadows. And uh, last time he showed some class by moving to Kentucky and winning. Yeah, and, and not only did he start his career in Iowa, he is in fact an Iowa bred. There aren't that many of them. He is three for three in his career. Like you mentioned, all of them were sprinting. So that is a is a bit of a question for this unbeaten uh, uh, three-year-old. Um, can he go to turns? We shall find out, but it's certainly going to be a factor in the race uh, 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 either way. And that win in the stake uh, in the Bowman Mill at Churchill Downs, again, uh had a decent field yeah no i think he beat some past horses at keeneland in the in that stakes win his second stakes win first came against the iowa breads but the bowman mill was an impressive uh sprint stakes win for glenn gary uh in his third lifetime race unbeaten you jumped the gun matt you're always ahead of the times but you did jump the gun by uh what are we talking a little over two weeks he's he's still two but he'll be three yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so he'll Brian. be three It'll be three in a few weeks. Anyways, since we're talking about Glenn Gary, let's take a look at the time for U.S. pace projector. There it is, Matt. Fast pace. There he is, number five, Glenn Gary on the lead. But we do have a host of horses uh, looking to maybe challenge Glenn Gary for that early lead. Gettysburg Address we already talked about. And I, I kind of have a feeling that Gettysburg Address will be a horse that can come from a little bit off the pace. Unproven, just, just my hunch. He did that in his debut. We'll have to see. But uh, he's up there as our uh, Raging Torrent, who we're going to talk about next. Third Street on the outside. Even Rhino Runner and uh, uh, the Morning Line favorite, who we haven't talked about yet, Otto the Conqueror, are not too far off. Uh, but we expect Glenn Gary on the lead. Time for him, U.S. is saying a fast pace, Matt. Yeah, yeah, and it's certainly the the whole all these Kentucky Derby prep uh, talks make me thinking that these horses are three year olds, uh, uh, three three year olds already. Yeah, we'll see how fast the pace turns out to be um, with this bunch of horses that you know uh, isn't particularly aren't particularly fast. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see. And for Glenn Gary, I think he he is a, a big question mark because he it should be the speed of the race, but he's never been farther than six furlongs. He's never obviously been two turns before, so uh, a whole bunch of new things going on for Glenn Gary. But uh, if they push him too much early, which Time Form US seems to be thinking that could happen, it could be tough for Glenn Gary. But on the other hand, if it's a, a little bit easier out there for him. Maybe two turns will be in his wheelhouse. Uh, like I said, Matt, there's a, a couple of sons of Maximus Mischief in the race, and we have two in a row. In fact, Raging Torrent comes to us from California, Matt. Uh, he's trained by Doug O'Neill. We're, uh, we're very familiar seeing Doug O'Neill travel with his, uh, with his potentially good two-year-olds, and, and sometimes he pops up and, and wins these type of races. Uh, this is a horse who won his debut in california and now has run in three straight graded stakes with moderate success yeah i think that's a good evaluation that uh, that debut victory was at del mar in july and since then uh o'neill has thrown this horse's this horse into the big graded 
stakes races for a two-year-old in Southern California with a third and a couple of fourth place finishes in those races that were at Del Mar and at Santa Anita. Yeah, he's been running against horses like Muth and uh, uh, Prince of Monaco, and uh, he, he's not been embarrassed, but on the other hand, he didn't really stick around to be close in the last 100 yards of those races. Uh, this should be a little bit easier uh, competition for Raging Torrent and certainly uh, eligible to run a good race. He's more of the speed that we talked about, but uh, notably he will have blinkers off this time in the springboard mile. Number seven looks like a long shot, Matt. His name is Rhino Runner. Uh, he's son of Carol Prince. Uh, he's run two races down there in Oklahoma. Um, he won his second start easy, and that was one mile, same distance at the track. Yeah, you know, and that's always a good thing. It was a nice five-length victory, and and it was over the track at Remington Park. Big step up from that maiden win to the uh, spring three hundred thousand dollars springboard mile. Here's the favorite, finally, Matt Otto the Conqueror, Tyler Gaffleon, uh, fresh off another riding title up here in Kentucky. Matt, he's going down to Oklahoma on Friday night. Otto the Conqueror, a son of Street Sense, Kentucky Derby winning Street Sense, trained by Steve Asmussen. He's run three very good races in Kentucky. Yeah, and this is the uh, five to two morning line favorite as made by the uh, odds makers at uh, at Remington Park. Um, yeah, I I love I love seeing these uh, these sons of and 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 daughters of. Street Sense, Street Sense, uh, still producing, uh, still producing good horses, and uh, and that that's that's nice to see. Steve Asmussen does very well with runners at Remington Park. It's one of the tracks where he has a large and successful barn year after year. That nice maiden special weight win and allowance win. Uh, both of those were at Seven Furlongs in Kentucky. So. Uh, um, you know, hard to, to put too many knocks on Otto the Conqueror. Yeah, I, I, even though this will be a stakes debut, I, I would say he is a deserving favorite in here, Matt. The only horse that's beaten him was a pretty good debut performance when he was second to Liberal Arts. And Liberal Arts, of course, has gone on to become a great stakes winner in Kentucky. So Otto the Conqueror coming off a pair of wins. Looks like he's getting a little better with every start. Never been more than seven, never been more than one turn. Uh, but he's certainly bred to handle the two turns of the one-mile springboard mile. Probably redundant of me to say one-mile springboard mile. Uh, springboard mile is obviously a mile. It's in the name, Matt. All right, number nine, Third Street. Asana Yoshida. We haven't seen a lot of Yoshidas hit the track. Uh, but here's Third Street, uh, a local horse, Matt, who's coming off an allowance win. That was five and a half furlongs, but this time before that we we haven't exactly been uh talking in glowing terms of the clever trevor and third sheet uh, third street was way back two starts back in the clever trevor yeah showed a little bit of speed early in the race in the clever trevor and then finished a a pretty distant uh uh eighth place in there uh did really no running in the race but as you said then came back and got an allowance win so who knows five and a half furlongs was that allowance win probably part of a good early pace as we showed you the time form use pace projector but uh, seems like an outsider other than maybe being involved a little bit early on friday night all right that's the springboard mile map we're going to uh uh segue effortlessly seamlessly into southern california racing los alamitos of course we've seen a lot of good horses over the years in the Los Al Futurity, came up a little light. We only got six on Saturday afternoon at Los Alamitos, but there are some potentially very good horses in here. Uh, number one, we're gonna do it from the rail out again, Matt. Uh, number one, Moonlight Sonata, a son of Malibu Moon, trained by Tim Yak Team. Matt, he was 33 to one when he made his debut uh, about three weeks ago. Yeah, but it was a nice victory. Uh, uh at Del Mar uh, by more than two lengths. And, you know, we, we know Tim Yachtin uh, 
recently, particularly for as the trainer who has taken over uh, so many of those Bob Baffert runners so that they could get Derby points and get into the Kentucky Derby. And I don't know, maybe that's going to happen with uh, some of the horses that are in this field because Baffert's got three in the low South futurity, which I'm pretty sure he has won a whole bunch of times. Yeah. He's won this race. Let me check my notes. 139 times so far, <laughs> Matt, which has to be a record. I digress, of course. Uh, yeah, Moonlight Sonata. Well, we, we, Tim Yachtim developed the ill-fated practical uh, move, and uh, he, I, I still think he was one of the best three-year-olds we saw this year. So maybe Moon uh, Moonlit Moonlight Moonlit Sonata can uh, uh, really uh, do something good. Uh, he had some workouts. He had some nice workouts going into that maiden race. I'm not sure why he was 33 to one, but as you say, going six and a half furlongs, a nice win in his debut. Could be a nice horse. We'll see. You should get odds again. Maybe not 33 to 1 here, but he'll uh, he'll have some odds on, on Saturday. Number two will not have those kind of odds. Number two is part of the Baffert trio that Matt was talking about. There's Kyle Frey, uh, better known for his Northern California riding. He's down to ride Winstock, Matt. And Winstock, um, unlike Baffert horses a little bit, he, he didn't look very precocious in his first two starts. Uh, a seven hundred thousand dollar two year old in training purchase, Winstock uh, came out and was favored in a couple of sprints where he didn't show much. Stretched out to a mile last time though, he looked good. Yeah, he won big in his third try uh, to win that maiden special weight by uh, seven and a half lengths. Big performance, but as you said, you know, that same thing struck me that it's unusual with these Baffert uh, uh, two year olds particularly when they're favorites like this one, that they don't win until their third start. Unusual, yeah, but sometimes horses just, uh, the, light, the light bulb goes off. A son of Solomini, who, uh, who developed into a really nice two-year-old especially, and then a pretty good three-year-old years ago, uh, Winstock uh, went to that lead in the one-mile maiden race, his third career start, and that seemed to, uh, seemed to help his stock move up because it was a nice maiden win. Number three is a very interesting horse, Matt. Number three is named Stronghold. Should be good as the distances get farther. He's the son of Ghost Zapper, trained by Phil D'Amato. And it's hard to knock his uh, his three career starts so far. Yeah, that's for sure. A really nice, uh, interestingly, a really nice maiden special weight uh, victory. And then uh, recently was second in the grade three Bob Hope stakes behind Nysos, who at this point is certainly one of the two top two-year-olds in California. Yeah, well, I, I don't know about Fierceness, who, who likely will be the favorite and, of course, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in impressive form, but I don't know if there's a more hyped horse right now than Nysos. Uh, Nysos, another Baffert runner that Matt was talking about, who won uh, that uh, grade three Bob Hope over Stronghold. I, I will say that Stronghold wasn't exactly close late in that race. He was beaten nearly nine lengths by uh, by Nysos. But Nysos looks like a bit of a freak. And Stronghold was second best that day uh, after running two solid races in Kentucky. Uh, I believe he was second at Ellis Park. And then he had a nice, pretty fast uh, one mile maiden win at Churchill Down. So Stronghold, interesting. Two uh, two second place finishes, a win at a mile, coming off a second in a graded stake to a really uh, hyped horse, although he was well beaten. So we'll see as he faces the Baffert Trio, maybe the most interesting of the non Baffert horses in the race. Number four is Ace of Clubs, Matt. Uh, this is a son of more spirit. And he's trained by Doug O'Neill. There's that name again. He's coming off of a couple of uh, turf races, which is another thing O'Neill is not afraid to do. Yeah, and you know, often get these O'Neill horses with interesting patterns in their past performances. And Ace of Clubs is certainly one of them. Uh, two victories came in uh, sort of claiming races. First was in a very high tagged, made in claimer 
where he got his first victory. And then he was in another high price optional claiming race where he was not in for a tag uh, last two times, as you mentioned, uh, races on the turf in stakes where he finished fourth and fifth. Yeah, yeah, he 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 was competitive in those races, maybe not real close to winning, but they were two stakes races uh, in Southern California, good enough races, and he ran reasonably well. And, and again, we've seen O'Neill do this a lot. Hot Rod Charlie, for example, had raced on turf early in his career, and uh, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm in no way, no way comparing uh, Ace of Clubs to Hot Rod Charlie yet, but uh, this is a horse to at least consider moving back to the dirt after a couple of stakes efforts on the grass. Uh, I, I threw up the time form U.S. pace projector here, Matt, because I, I think there's some speed on the outside with Baffert, and a lot of these uh, low south futurities that Baffert's won over the years have been won by horses prominent throughout the race. Number five, Coach Prime, you see, is uh, uh, our favorite. We haven't seen a morning line yet, but we have them listed as the favorite and number six is wind me up both Baffert horses both should be well liked in the uh in the odds and they're they are definitely a part of this pace not necessarily a real fast pace as is number three stronghold but let's talk a little bit more about coach prime the number five the horse that again we list as the favorite he's a son of quality road matt uh he came out on turf and ran pretty well in his debut uh showing some speed hanging around pretty well uh, a little bit different to see a Baffert uh, horse uh, begin his career on turf, but then he uh, switched to dirt and uh, looked like potentially the real deal in his second career race. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, winning that second start at Del Mar by more than seven lengths. Uh, 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 that performance got a lot of hype, a lot of talk. Maybe part of that was because of his name, uh, Coach Prime, who uh, 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 Deion Sanders uh, has gotten an awful lot of hype this year in the college football season. So maybe there was a little bit of that, but I think a little bit of that and the Baffert record at uh, 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 in the Los Al Futurity is the reason that we've made him our morning line favorite. Yeah, yeah, that maiden race uh, did get some buzz. I, I put him into my top 10 early Kentucky Derby list after that uh, uh, win. And uh, there's Flavian Pratt again. We were talking about Flavian Pratt down in Oklahoma on Friday night. He's going to fly right back to California for uh, Coach Prime in the Low South Futurity. And the horse that time form U.S. pace uh, uh, projected uh, as the early leader in this Low South Futurity is Wind Me Up, another Baffert. J.J. Hernandez will be in the saddle on Saturday, Matt, and uh, Wind Me Up has been this mile 16th distance a couple of times now. After a nice debut win, I thought he ran a very good race, went second to Moose, who came back and was second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Unfortunately, Wind Me Up did not fare nearly as well as the horse that beat him in the Grade 1 American Pharaoh, as Wind Me Up really packed in the tent early. Uh, but when you're talking about what Fierceness did and and, uh, and Muth uh, in that uh, pace and then throughout the, the, the race of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I could probably give him a pass coming out of that race, but it wasn't a good performance. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and hey, you, you, you mentioned Fierceness, the winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. You mentioned Muth, the winner of that American Pharaoh. Those are two of the current two-year-olds that have to rank right up in the top five or so two-year-olds from from, um, from most people. Um, hey, this he, he's run in two grade one races, two quality fields against quality horses, which is certainly except for stronghold in and that second in nisos we can't say for the rest of this field yeah and i i would say if you draw a line through the breeders cup juvenile which of course wind me up backed out early uh the american pharaoh probably is the performance that stands out at least on a class level uh over anybody in this field and if wind me up can bounce back off that tough race in the breeders cup juvenile especially if he's on the lead with uh, top rider J.J. Hernandez. Uh, wind me up, certainly a big threat. Baffert, uh, as always, looks like he's got a uh, 
a bit of a stranglehold on this field, Matt, with uh, three uh, prime contenders, if you will, no pun intended, <laughs> coach primes. But uh, the other three are all interesting horses, and uh, certainly somebody could uh, get in there and, and break up the game a little bit for Mr. Baffert. But it's time to make our top picks for these two two-year-old stakes races, different tracks, different parts of the country, but they both offer Kentucky Derby points. Matt, you go first. Let's start back with Remington and the Springboard Mile on Friday night. Okay, happy to go first, Brian. Uh, um, I'm going to look for a little bit of price in there, and I'm going to hope that that six to one on the morning line, we can get close to that with Gettysburg address. Hey, anytime you can get that kind of price on a Brad Cox runner that, you know, has has certainly flashed some talent, has some, you know, has some tactical speed. Those are all good things. So I'll take Gettysburg address uh, in the springboard mile. Yeah, we're, we're thinking alike, Matt. Six to one on the morning line sounds good to me. Flavian Pratt coming in to ride sounds good to me. Um, I, I just have a feeling Gettysburg address is not a speed, speed horse. And I, I think that will help him here in a race with, clear speed. So Gettysburg Address was able to pass horses in that debut win. Sloppy track last time. He still ran pretty well in his stakes debut. That was a tough ask. This one will, uh, he's got a little more experience for, and I think he'll run a very good race. Three horses clearly on the morning line below him. So Matt and I are hoping for some decent odds with our joint top pick in the uh, Springboard Mile Getty, Gettysburg Address. You went a different way, though, in the Low South Futurity, and you are picking against the Baffert domination in the Low South Futurity, man. Yeah, makes me sound pretty foolish uh, when you put it that way, Brian. But I was going to, I was going to stay, uh, say the same thing. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's probably a stretch to think that one of the three Bafferts uh, is not going to win this race. But for sure, this is not. Baffert's first string uh, in this. This is not his prime time players. Uh, no pun intended, I guess, with that. So I'm going to take a shot uh, with Stronghold from Phil D'Amato, hoping that that uh, second place finish in the Bob Hope behind Nisos is a, a, a little bit of a hit, a, a, a hint that this one's got a, a little bit of talent we say four to one. I don't know. Three Baffert's in there. Maybe he could be a little higher than that. Yeah, he could be higher, Matt, and I kind of like the pick. Stronghold has a lot to like. I like Phil D'Amato. I like Ghost Zapper as a sire as these horses stretch out a little bit. I like the fact that Stronghold's run three good races at three different tracks. This will be his fourth different track in four career races. But uh, like we said, there's nothing wrong with his first three, and he, he, he's shown some ability there. So you're going to try to beat the favorite uh why not the non baffert one stronghold looks like a nice uh horse and you're right four to one he, he might be a little bit higher than that with all the bafferts uh i am i only have one word for you matt i think it's one word prime time i am on coach prime i think coach prime is a very good horse i was impressed yeah by the seven and a half length win um, at Del Mar in the maiden race, visually impressive. But I was more impressed by the way he did it because he bobbled at the start. He was in traffic. He split horses, and and then he just showed his domination. That, of course, was his first race on dirt. This is a one point seven uh, one point seven million dollar yearling purchase, who I think could become one of Baffert's best horses. So I, I'm I'm a little high on Coach Prime, and even as the favorite, I could pick no one else but him in the Los Al Futurity. All right, those are our top picks. Two interesting races uh, again. Man, we, we don't know if we'll see these horses in the Kentucky Derby. We don't know if they'll be trained by Bob Baffert by then. We, we, don't, we don't know a lot, but we know how to handicap these two races, and that's what we got for you. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend, before we go? Yeah, we're winding down from 2023. It's uh... Hard to believe, fast year. So much has gone on uh, uh, this year in in racing and and such. So uh, good luck to all of you Horse Center fans this weekend, and thanks for watching the show as always. Yeah, Matt and I sure appreciate you watching each and every week. 
If you haven't yet uh, uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, we appreciate you doing that. Turn on the notifications, even leave us a comment, whether good or bad, we enjoy checking them out. I also want to thank Candace Curtis in the home office for the race graphics, uh, of course, time form US for the pace projections we use uh, almost on a weekly basis. And of course, our sponsor Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Folks, Matt and I are going to be thrilled to be back next week before Christmas with another edition of Horse Center. Until then, have a great week. Good luck. We will see you then.